There is a pervasive proverb among Caucasian females when referring to dating or hooking up with African-American men. And that saying is once you go black, you don't go back. What this means is that once a woman has a little fun with a black dude, she won't be interested in going back to dating white guys or any other race of male on account of the wild and crazy time she had with the brother. Now, I'm not a white girl, so I can't speak to whether or not this is true. However, I have a proverb to piggyback off of that one, which rings 256% true. And my proverb is once you go black, you can't go back. Allow me to explain. Women are extremely influenced by perceived social pressure, whether they admit it or not. All of their decisions from what they wear, to where they work, to the cars they drive, in their minds, are heavily scrutinized by just about everyone they know. Of course, this isn't really the case. Sure, a friend of hers might comment on her new shoes, or the fact that she needs to find a new job, or that her boyfriend is a loser. But after that 45 second conversation, her friend isn't thinking about her anymore. She's thinking about herself. The problem is, women don't realize this. They're under the impression that everyone around them, men and women alike, are constantly judging everything they do all the time, as though they have nothing else to do other than to watch and talk about her all day, every day. This speaks to the extreme solipsism of the female species. More importantly, it is the reason that when they mess with black guys, a lot of them feel like they can't date white guys anymore. In her mind, if she's seen with a brother, she knows she's probably off limits to white guys. So now the question becomes, why are white girls considered to be off limits to white guys once she messes with black guys? Why do white guys lose their freaking minds when they find out their pretty blonde haired blue eyed snowflake has been violated by a brother? Well, the answers are actually quite simple. But before I get to that, let me quickly remind you that if you have a question or a comment pertaining to dating, relationships, or anything else that applies to dominating life as a man here in the 2020s, call the TSR Hotline Voice Mailbox at 702-919-7197. Just leave your question or comment at the beep, and I will read and answer the best ones live on the air during the 7. You'll get multiple perspectives, opinions, and sage advice from each panelist. I will also address questions or comments in videos just like this one. You also need to make sure you get your hands on my free ebook, 16 Ways to Immediately Disqualify Her for a Long Term Relationship. This ebook is a guide for men who are back on the dating market after a divorce, a bad breakup, or any number of frustrating situations that led you to this community in the first place. This book will make it nearly impossible for the bad girls out there to fool you into thinking that they're good girls. This book is absolutely free when you sign up for my newsletter. Go to donovansharp.com slash newsletter, plug in your very best email, and the book is yours. Okay, let's get back to our question. Why are white women considered to be off limits by white guys if they've messed with black guys? I answered part of this question in a video I did a while back discussing the racial implications of the very first black bachelor in that franchise's history. Take a look. The second uncomfortable truth about the bachelor people are afraid to talk about out loud is that the white women who compete will be considered tainted by white men. Yes, this is also a thing. When a white man finds out his white wife or girlfriend had biblical relations with a black man, he loses his mind. She's ruined, he thinks. But his adverse reaction is not because of racism, at least not most of the time. It's about the adult film industry and the media for the most part. Let me explain. Every black male adult film actor, without exception, has an exceptionally large... Now, the same could be said about their white counterparts, which is why they're in the business in the first place. But the black male actors have these gargantuan... that make even the most impressive-looking white... bananas look comparatively small. If any man, black or white, consumes enough adult film entertainment with black actors, he's going to internalize this as the norm and subconsciously assume that every black man has a huge... Add that to the fact that white men are routinely portrayed in movies and television as latent or inferior beta males, while black men are portrayed as these static alphas, I can see why some white guys might hit the eject button if he finds out his pretty little fair-skinned companion has been to the dark side. He's thinking of her being ravaged by this hulking, muscular super alpha with an eggplant emoji the size of a baseball bat. This is exactly why a lot of white men will not date white women who have dated black men. 
Very few would admit that out loud, but a lot of them really do feel this way. So when white men watch Matt James swapping spit with pretty white women, those girls are all but discarded from their lists. Don't believe me? After Lindsey Vaughn dated Tiger Woods, white guys stayed away. Only black men would date her exclusively, and now she's engaged to NHL star P.K. Subban, who is black. Then there's Amber Rose. You think white guys are lining up to date her given her dating history? Look, I don't make the rules, but facts are facts. And at the end of the day, every white contestant on Matt James's season of The Bachelor will find it very difficult to find white men who will date or marry them. That's a difficult truth to acknowledge for these girls, but it is indeed the truth. Today's white men consistently show and tell white women that once they're marked as a wet and dirty shark, which is a derogatory label assigned to white girls who date black guys, she is then considered to be undateable and unmarriable. Now, white men would never admit this out loud or in a group, but black men are a threat to them in terms of dating market value. Yes, white guys are at the top of the dating market food chain, meaning that all things being equal, most white girls prefer white men. But conventional wisdom in their circles is that man for man, black men are physically superior, have more game, and are much better between the sheets than they are. Whether or not this is actually true doesn't seem to matter, but the fact of the matter is that mainstream media portrays black males as static alphas who generate tingles with every interaction they have with a woman. Then, like I previously discussed, when you factor in interracial adult films into the mix where every black male actor has an enormous sausage, which of course further perpetuates the BBC myth, it's no wonder white dudes stay away from white girls who have come to the dark side even one time in their lives. So rather than admitting the truth about their dating market options, white girls use the word don't in place of the word can't. They do this to give themselves and the world the impression that they'd go back to dating white guys if they wanted to, knowing that they probably couldn't if word got out about her proclivities to commingle with brothers. Here's another question. Is this really about race in the first place? In short, no. Let me give you a personal example. If I were interested in a woman, approached her, got her number, and set up a date, then listened to her swoon over her ex-boyfriend who stood at 6'5", 3% body fat, who was worth seven figures, and had a 13-inch sausage, I would not set up a second date. You want to know something? His race wouldn't matter. Whether this mythical man were Asian, white, black, or Hispanic, his race would be of little or no consequence. The fact that I don't measure up statistically to her ex is what would keep me away, not his race. Today's white men live that make-believe scenario every time they see a good-looking white girl holding hands with a black guy. No, they can't assume what his net worth is. But if that guy's in decent shape, white guys automatically assume that he is plowing her senseless with his baseball bat-sized male organ. In a white guy's mind, he thinks that he'll never be able to smash her or take her on the emotional roller coaster ride the brother appears to be doing for her. If he saw a pretty white girl with a white guy who was tall, good looking, and self assured, he'd probably have those same assumptions. So, this scarlet letter has more to do with the perceived persona of black men and less with our skin tone. A while back, I did a podcast called Why Do Parents Discourage Their Teens from Interracial Dating? In that episode, I stated that if white fathers showed their daughters what a strong, masculine head of household was, rather than allowing themselves to be bossed around and marginalized by their bossy wives, their daughters would be far less likely to date outside of their race, namely black guys. Another element I pointed out was that white fathers know that if their white daughters had a reputation for dating black men or black boys in high school, she would essentially take herself out of the running to secure a high-value white male, at least in the city or country they live in. White fathers can say whatever they want, they can give politically correct answers if asked in public, but deep down, they know that if their white daughters date, hook up with, marry, or even have a baby with a black man, her dating options would be greatly limited in that regard. And guess what, white fathers? It's okay to feel this way. This isn't about race. It's about your daughter essentially rejecting men like you. It's the very same reason that black mothers lose their minds when their black sons choose white women. Hell, even I can admit that if I had a daughter, I'd feel some type of way if she chose to be with a white guy. Does that make me a racist? No, it makes me a human being. The once you go black trope is the quintessential example of women not acknowledging the truth about their status in the dating market if they are ever labeled as the white girl who dates black dudes. And that truth is that once she is labeled as such, 
Short of moving to another state and starting anew with new friends, erasing all Facebook or other social media pictures, she will be all but invisible to white men. And I would agree with this assertion. White girls can act like they have the option to go back if they chose to by proudly proclaiming they won't. But I've always said that women are far more aware of the truth regarding intersexual dynamics than men will ever be. And it is for this reason alone that they understand very clearly that once they go black, they can't go back. So white guys, am I wrong about you guys staying away from white girls if they've messed with black guys? Or are you going to admit the truth? And white girls, what extents do you guys go to to cover up your dark side escapades? I'd be very interested to find out. And don't forget, if you want access to tens of thousands of hours of life-changing content not found anywhere, go to patreon.com slash Donovan Sharp. As a patron, you'll get access to SharpStream, which is my own private streaming platform where I do my daily show, audio versions of my live stream so you can listen on the go on any device, past episodes that cover the basics of this community, and much more. Join our community of over 1,500 men who have decided to take control of their lives by becoming a patron today. The link is in the description.